The Packers face off with the Raiders on Monday Night Football this week, and one of the things at the top of everybody's mind in Packers Nation is the state of our run defense. Really the trenches overall on both sides of the ball, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how do we get our run game going, and then we're going to talk about a premier matchup out wide with Devontae Adams against Jair Alexander. So let's get right into it. Let's go into this Packers run defense. So the Packers run defense was atrocious on Thursday Night Football against the Detroit Lions. And we really need that to kind of pick itself back up in order to be successful in this game, I think. And, you know, working in our favor in that aspect is the fact that the Raiders have not been running the ball particularly well this year. I mean, they're towards the bottom of the league overall running and... It's taken a little while for them to kind of get things going. They did have their best running game, arguably, against the Chargers this past week. It really comes down to Josh Jacobs and him getting his feet back under him a little bit. So he held out all offseason, didn't go to any training camp, so he's kind of been running himself into shape to start the season. And he had a decent game on the ground against the Chargers, but he had eight catches for uh, like 80 some yards or something like that. So he was getting involved in the offense in other ways. And I think that's indicative of how he is going to be used for them a bit. And I think, you know, he did lead the league in rushing last year. So he's due for a breakout game because he definitely has not lost a step. So uh, look for Josh Jacobs and for the Packers to be able to stop him to be one of the critical aspects of this game on Monday night. On the other side of the ball, conversely, we did not run the ball worth a lick against Detroit. So 12 carries, two of those from Jordan Love, but 12 carries, 27 yards. To put that into perspective, Khalif Raymond had one run on the day and he had 40 yards on that run. So not a good day at the office for the Packers offense. A lot of that does come down to the trenches and the injuries across the offensive line have made it bad. But our offensive line, when they were healthy, was not run blocking particularly well. So a lot of this doesn't necessarily go onto our backs, but overall on the offensive line. And against Detroit, they weren't even good against the pass, which they've been very good against throughout the first three games. So Hopefully we can see a resurgence of that pass blocking to free up some more options for Jordan Love and the offense to operate, but they do need to commit to the run a bit more. 12 carries throughout a four-quarter game is not enough, and granted, yes, we were down early against Detroit, so kind of had to abandon the run game to try to stay in it because you couldn't afford to run the clock like that, but we need to get Aaron Jones involved early, and we need to use A.J. Dillon in ways that he's going to be more effective because he has not had a great season to start. So the Raiders do present a little bit of a, a get right game for the Packers and maybe we can get things going a little bit more with an offense here going against the 28th ranked defense by DVOA in the Raiders. So where do we have an opportunity to attack them? They haven't been particularly great against the run so that poses an opportunity for us to kind of get things going on the run. Their defensive front is not particularly strong but they do have a great edge in Max Crosby, of course. But I think there's opportunities where we can attack that defense through the air as well. So Kenny Pickett attacked them down the field a bit and uh, completed a 72-yard touchdown against them where it didn't look like Marcus Peters was particularly able to hang with uh, the Steelers receiver Austin. But it wasn't just down the field that Kenny Pickett was able to attack them. He also attacked them in the middle of the field. And if you look at this concept here, it's very familiar for the Packers, uh, Packers fans and for the Packers offense to see this concept. And we've executed it particularly well this year as well. So we can see them doing a bit more of this and attacking the middle of the field, which we've definitely seen that Jordan Love has a propensity and a desire to attack the middle of the field. Not only him, but Matt LaFleur looking to, to attack that a bit more himself as well. So there's some opportunities for this offense to eat. There's a lot of meat on the bone, and I think that's how we're going to kind of get things going. But I think the matchup that we're all really excited to see here, and unfortunately they're both coming off of injuries, is Devontae Adams and Jair Alexander. So Devontae Adams, despite you know not great quarterback play throughout the year, he will have Jimmy Garoppolo back, though, this week, who's coming off of a concussion. You know, 
he's still produced good numbers, Devontae Adams has. He's got 33 receptions for 397 yards and three touchdowns. All three of those categories, he's in the top 10 in the NFL in. So still producing despite poor quarterback play, which is really a testament to him because uh, for a long time, people thought that, you know, some of that was a byproduct of playing with Aaron Rodgers. But since he's left Green Bay and been with the Raiders, Derek Carr, a number of backups, and then also Jimmy Garoppolo, he still produced outstanding numbers for the Raiders. But Devontae did have to leave that game last week with a shoulder injury against the Chargers. He did end up coming back but he was a little bit limited and did explain after the game that his shoulder was in an immense amount of pain. So we'll see. He hasn't been practicing so far this week, and we'll see if he is ultimately ready to go. I think he will be, but you know he's going to be facing off against Jair Alexander, and Jair Alexander is coming off a back injury that's had him sidelined for two weeks. And really, I think some of that might have impacted his performance against the Falcons, which he did not perform particularly well in. And in particular, you can kind of see that he might have been hampered by that, by the fact that he wasn't willing to get involved in run support, which usually isn't a problem for Jair. He's a feisty, scrappy uh, defensive back back there. And, you know, I think this might have been a little bit of benefit of the doubt for Jair that he was possibly a bit, you know, hampered by by some some soreness in that back because we hadn't seen him on the injury report before that so I don't know what happened but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there but for me in this game I'm calling this one a close 28 to 27 win for the Packers against ultimately a subpar Raiders team that we should beat easily but I could see this game going just as easily the other way where if we can't defend against the run this game could get out of hand and you know lose to ultimately a team that is not as good as the Packers roster. I do expect Josh Jacobs is going to have a good day on the ground. It's going to be his best performance of the year so far. And then I think Jordan Love is going to ultimately put things together a little bit earlier. He's not one to shy away from a challenge. And I think the fact that we went out there and he was a little bit embarrassed in that first half is going to be some fuel that he's going to get things going early against the Raiders defense here. So I expect them kind of put things together a little bit more rhythm early in that offense, but then attack them deep. And I think Christian Watson is going to have a number of big plays against this defense because they are not going to be able to run with him if he's at full speed. But a lot of this, like I said, is going to come down to the injury report. And you can see the final injury report here after this video.